you get back to those coaching ranks, let those bums know that they've missed out on a great opportunity today. And I think we'll run it a little better next time. No, that's all right. No worries, my pleasure. Um, yeah, thanks for coming along today. I was just saying to Byron before, like, I wouldn't even come to my own gig because it's just so <laughs> bloody beautiful outside today. Uh, it should be all at the beach. So I don't know what you guys are doing here. Just kidding. But, um, yeah, so just go a little bit back on, on what we're going to try and do over these three um, sessions. Uh, I want you guys to tell me what you want the sessions on. Uh, indicate it to your directors of coaching and say, Listen, I really need help with this or I'd like to know more about this, etc, uh, etc. Et I went to the club um, when I was first asked to do this. I said, get back to me, tell me what you want the clinics to be on. That was probably three months ago and I got an email on Friday. So I've had to, I was in Cairns, I was coming back from Cairns, we had a game against Sydney last night. So I had to go through my notes to find out old uh, clinics. So I just updated it a little bit this morning. So I'm not as prepared as I'd like to be normally for something like this. But uh, anything you guys want clinics on, please just let your director of coaching know, let the club know, and I'm happy to come and bring, bring something uh, to, to the table for you. So what we're doing it today is today's clinic is going to be on planning and the importance of planning. Um, and for the most part, training plans, okay? So I just get a quick hands, who's a head coach here? Assistant, just two, yep, good, okay. So for assistant coaches, this is something that you'll look to do in the future as you take on head roles. Uh, as head coaches, we all training plan right now? Do we training plan up here or do we write it down? We all write it down? Show's over, good night, let's go. <laughs> go enjoy the sun. It's funny when you come to these things, you're often preaching the converted, but let's just talk about issues with regards to planning and how we can do it and what we should be thinking of and how we can do it better, uh, according to me. Now, the first and foremost, I'm gonna ask this gentleman right here. Actually, I'm gonna ask it to all of you. It's a real simple question. And you all should know the answer. And I'd be interested to see if anyone does. What is the club's objective? What is the club's objective? Say it nice and loud. Is that your theory or has it been bestowed upon you that this is what this club stands for? It has? Everyone know that? Is that what it is? Developing players. That's pretty broad. Like developing into, into what? I'll be honest, I don't know. You don't know? You're ahead of our... Do we have a club objective in writing? That's what we need. Number one thing is we need to stand for something. We need a motto, we need a mission statement. And after that, we have that and it's bestowed upon you. You can then start to plan. So that's the number one thing this club needs is we need to represent something. So from a, as a father and an ex-member of uh, Frankston and now coming back in, I look at Frankston and I'm like, I know everyone's doing a tremendous job and, it, and all that. What does it represent? I know we've got 10 teams in under 12s, we've got two teams in under 8. Are we feeding the masses or are we elite? I know when I get little adverts about clinics and camps, it's elite this, elite that, elite this. Are we? Is that what our goal is? Can you have 10 teams and be elite? So these are things that, as a club, we need to identify what do we want to be. Now out of that, out of that, then we start to plan. And every decision that you people make as coaches should be geared towards whatever that mission statement is. If we want to be elite, we've got to be ruthless during tryouts. We've got to be, I can't have a mum and dad coach. But there's things, so maybe that's not what we want to be. If we want to be Chelsea and just be in regional 44, we're happy to do that. Let's have 150 teams in every age group. But we have to have an identity. We have to have a mission statement. And then we have to plan around that mission statement. So I'm going to work with Chris. It's part of me wanting to get back involved in Frankston because from a father, I don't see the direction of what we want to be. So I'm going to work with Chris and our other head coaches, directors of coaching, and try and formulate something that we can all identify with that represents Frankston basketball. And you guys should have input into this. And then we can start planning around it. So, what well, plan around a, a, a statement? Does it make sense? 
what sort of plan would we build around a statement? A season plan. You don't do a training plan around we want to be this, that, the other, although you kind of do. If you want to be elite, then you come in with an unbelievable set of drills and everything's high octane and you've got four coaches for 12 kids and everything's you know, super duper and we're off to the weights room afterward and that, that, that. You've got your running coach comes in. I'm not sure that's who we are. Okay, I'm not sure basketball in Victoria or even Australia is that organised right now that we can get to that. College hoops, yep, okay, in the US we've got that. We're starting to develop that in the National League levels in the NBL. I'm not so sure about WNBL yet. I still think it's a little bit amateur hour there. Thank you, Basketball Australia. But I think that we have to know what we are and then we can start building what we want to be around that. So your season plan, who here has done a season plan for this year? Tell me what your season plan is. Development. Development. So is that a plan or is it just a word? Fundamentals. Fundamentals. Okay, expand upon this. Development fundamentals. So the first one is footwork. Yep, beautiful. Then it's rebounding, passing, dribbling, just all the fundamentals. So you've just got a list of fundamentals that you want and that's your objective over the whole. That's the long-term objective. Beautiful. And then on the short-term objective, I guess it's just getting the catching the ball so we can do this. Yeah. and yeah. Dribbling and dribbling. We're elite, right? No, we're not. Yeah, you've got 12 eights. Six and seven. 12, six and seven girls. Okay, unbelievable. I love that. I actually saw his training session this morning. It's a bit of a, a Dorothy Dixon there. Um, and we already had a bit of a chat about what you're trying to achieve this year. So, um, really, I, 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 we talk about the double bottom ages and we're going off the tangent a little bit here. But I, I'm watching the 14 girls that are going to help us out today. That's the first year of double bottom age at Frankston. And you have a look at that age group. And then you have a look at the 16s or the 18 girls. Uh, which, which is really poor quality. You know, I hate, hate to say it, but it is. Um, and then you look at that, and we could probably have two VC teams, no pressure. There's probably two VC teams in 14s, and the third team's really strong as well. Um, that's where we want to get to. Okay, so it all starts with these people right here doing the double bottom age kids. I think it's a, one of the most important jobs in the club to make sure that we get fundamentals, footwork, passing, catching, or running, and all that sort of stuff down pat. Beautiful. The season plan should be built around, as I said, the club's objective. So if the club's objective is junior development into elite, da da da, you've got to start them off somewhere and everything's got to be that. So that's good. Um, anybody else here done a season plan? So 14, four boys. Yep. Much the same. Much the same. Develop. Yeah, development skills.
kids get better after a game, after a training, Excuse all me. those things. These are things that employ a winning culture, but not necessarily winning. Okay, so good words, winning culture. I think winning culture should be part of our club mantra. Somewhere, we've got to heat that in. Good, good, good addition. Now, with your season training plan, have you outlaid that to the families of your players yet? Uh, in a broad way, yes. In a, what's that? A broader, just a... In a broad way, yeah. An objective of what the I would be in a very thorough, very straight between the eyeballs way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't a question. It wasn't... No, no, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I wouldn't... Pretty much isn't good enough. I would be saying I've slammed them between the eyes and they know exactly what this is about this year. Okay, yeah. Because parent education yes. and part of having these plans is, you know, you can help. You can, it's a communicator. I write it down. This is my season plan. Yep. When the parents inevitably come up to you and say, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And da, 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 which will happen. We know it does. Yeah, okay. It's going to happen. Season plan. This is why we're doing what we do. I write it down. You understand it because I gave you a copy. Okay. So in, in, bring it to your parents as well. So they are as educated as they can be. They're still going to be riding your ass because that's what they do. You know, they're parents. But at least you've got something in writing and when you sit down to have a conversation about why are you, why are you, why aren't you, why aren't you, every decision you make is about your plan. It's about your, what you're trying to achieve, what the club mantra what the club wants to achieve. My decision was based upon this. They might not agree with it, but you got it in writing. They can't argue with it. Like, you don't agree? Okay, we agree to disagree. Conversation, next topic. And you know what the next topic is. Well, why don't you play me kid more? <laughs> so, if you're writing it down, share it. Okay, because you, what you're doing is you're giving out knowledge. Knowledge gives understanding, and understanding makes your job easier. Because you guys, uh, I love, I've got so much time for the, the people involved in all basketball clubs across the state. Because you know there's no wins here. You're going to cop it in the, cop it in the head, from, or cop it in the neck from a parent at some stage. There's not a lot of gratitude for what you do. You're giving up your time, you're giving up your afternoon, beautiful sunny day to come listen to me be a windbag. They don't, they don't care about that. All they care about little Johnny's court time. Okay, but you write it down, it makes things easier for you. Okay, and that's what if I can give you one thing, is to make your job easier, that's it, okay? Because I want you people, all of you, to get better at your craft and to enjoy your craft, which is really important. Because if you stop enjoying it because you've got a parent group that's on your back, we lose you, the kids lose you, and we can't have 10 teams in under 12s. So, now the most important thing about planning, and I'll come back and you guys have all said, is the training plan. Okay. Um, as I said, training plans need to be written down. They should be kept. Uh, I used to work with a guy at Knox um, called Tony Smythe who used to actually keep a logbook and he'd write all his training plans in the book. So he'd just pull out the book, go back to February 6th. That was a great training. I'm going to go that and re redo that one again, but you write it in again and put the date down. That's a great way of doing it. I can't do it that way. I need my training plan in my hands. I've got to walk around with it in my hands. That's the way I feel comfortable. It goes in the back pocket. I lose it when I put it, which pockets it in. That's how I operate. I can't keep walking over to a, to a score desk to go and say, what have I got next? I need this. I don't even read them half the time, but I know I've got it. It's, in, it's my little safety net for me. Now, why do we write it down? This is my lovely wife just here, by the way, anyone who doesn't know Karen, she's looking after 12 and 14 girls this year as director of coaching, coaching 14 one. It's got a nice squad too. Um, love my wife, it's just two things she loves to do. Okay, if I'm at home and I sit down, I know that in five seconds she's going, babe, can you give me a cup of tea? That's one thing she does. Okay, the other thing that also she always does as well is when I'm driving, I've done a 12 hour day, I come in and uh, I walk in the door, she goes, hey babe, did you get my text? No, what you, it's a shopping list. Or it's like, can you go get the milk? And as I'm walking to the door, she's like, oh, can you get this? Can you get this? Can you get this? Can you get this? I can't remember what I did this morning. So what do I ask her to do? Can you text it to me? Give me the list. Send me the list. I need it written down. I need to see it. And I need to be able to follow it when I walk into Coles. Yes, I've got that. Yes, I've done that. Yes, I've done that. I need that. 
That's why we do a training plan. You need it. It needs to be in your hands. You need to be able to see what you've planned. You need to be able to follow it down to a T. Okay, you need it written down. Couple of reasons. One, when you spend time to write a training plan, you have to think about what you're gonna do. There has to be a purpose behind it. Okay, so it's got you thinking about the game, which is already making you a better coach. If you, and, you know, there's plenty of coaches who can just go out here and run an hour long, uh, 90 minute training session and just wing it. And they can be great. Once, maybe twice. Really, you know, coach's been around 40 years, they might be able to do a whole season's worth. But I can tell you right now, it's not gonna be as detailed, it's not gonna provide the greatest experience those kids can have because they haven't thought about it beforehand. They haven't implemented. Now, if you've got coaching 40 years, you might have five drills for every aspect of the sport. And you keep going to the well with those five drills and you wonder why the kids are bored, you know? Because you haven't thought about it, you're going on autopilot. So if you write it down, it makes you think about basketball, it makes you think about different aspects of the game. So why practice plan? I, I remember when I was here, the head of basketball here at Frankston, and uh, I implemented something new because uh, we had so many teams. They, the, the year I came in, um, there was a little bit of political upheaval, and, and they said, we're not cutting anybody. No kids get cut. So we had 105 teams in every age group. It was inc insane. And we had to try and get training courts for all these teams. It was costing the club unbelievable money. Club, the Blues ran at a, quite a big loss. So we started to put teams together, and I know you guys are oh yeah, so you're the guy who did it. So it'd be three teams over two courts and that sort of thing, so you could sort of rotate. And I had coaches come to me and say, oh man, this is bullshit, you know, like, I used to have a court to my own and it was so much better, and I'd be oh okay, yeah, fair enough. And I'd go along to the training session and half the training was, you know, playing knockout and this, that and the others. This guy don't need a full court. This guy don't need that. It's about using your time efficiently. Okay, efficiently. And that's what a training plan does. If you've got 90 minutes and you can fill 90 minutes, it's like, okay, I've got this drill, then I'm doing this, and then I'm doing this. You're not sitting around going, oh, what do I do next? What have I got? It's zip, zip, zip. And you're keeping the kids' attention, which is important. You know, a day like today, Sunday, beautiful day out, they've already done a training. These kids are gonna be bored out of their head if I don't get them going pretty soon. But it's gonna be, you know, like, that's what you get facing every Sunday, every Tuesday night making sure those kids are dialing over. They've been at school all day on a Tuesday. I've got under 12, eight kids. And how's I gonna keep their attention if I haven't planned the day? It's not gonna happen. You play on a Friday night, you got training on a Sunday. What happens on a Friday night? You didn't rebound, you didn't get back in transition D, you didn't do this, you didn't do this. Who writes it down? Excellent, beautiful. You gotta write that down. So when you go to Sunday morning, do your practice plan, what have you got? Four or five things I need to work on immediately, important to our team. Those who don't write it down will forget by Sunday, and then you're working on something else, or you're not working on something, it's like, bloody hell, I forgot what to do, let's just go play knockout. Okay, so write it down, bring that to it. Ensure all aspects of the game are covered. The practice plan, you avoid running out of ideas, you keep practice dynamic and enjoyable for the players, you project an image of being organised, um, you'll assist with prioritising what to teach and when, and main re maintain a record of what you've done. You're talking about delivering fundamentals. Okay, well now you've got it written, you've got a record, and write some notes on it afterwards if you don't cover something, you change it up. Or if you, um, a, a drill didn't work, and why didn't it work? What, you know, what was good, what was bad, write it down in your thing and just keep it catalogued so you can go back to it. Yeah, oh, you do that, so you can type it in afterwards. Yeah, so Friday night I'll go home, I'll save and copy the last Sunday, yep. and then I'll put on there what notes I've made, Beautiful. So we've got grading games start this week, right? Pre-grading. Pre-grading starts. Who's in pre-grading games? So they're challenge games, are So you lose, you drop down, you win, you stay where you are. Is that how it works? Kind of? Yes. Okay. How many of you know exactly how many training sessions you had before going into tryouts up until this session? How many trainings did you have? Don't think about it. How many have written it down and know exactly? Okay. So it's five sessions? Five sessions? So it's hard to know if they just sort of sling that at you, but okay, let's say if you're following the next week, is that normal grading the following week? So you can say I've got seven sessions to try and work with. We don't have to go to training session on Friday because there's no practice game. 
Okay. You're not sure. Okay, so these are things as a club we need to do better. We have to make sure that everyone knows how many training sessions they've got. Uh, I know the VJBL is kind of slow giving out information, so some things are unavoidable with regards to knowing that. But with those sessions that you have before your first game, whether it's a grading game or a practice game, you have to know what to implement. Okay, what do you need in first? What do you need first? No, 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 you got the... What do you need first? Yeah, sorry, question without notice, tough answer. There's no wrong answer here. I'd like to get a press break because I don't want, I want to keep in the game and not get beaten by a press. So okay. Ball, cool. So safe delivery of the ball is a priority for you? Excellent. First, first thing you're going to put in? Yeah, fundamentals. Fundamentals? Yep. What age group? Uh, 12. 12? Okay. Yeah. First thing you're doing? Okay. So half half court offense or court offense. or just yeah. working passing and yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's really important that you have to know what you want to implement first and what's going to be ready for your first game. Because as the season goes on, you're going to develop things and put things in place that you don't necessarily need in the first game. So you probably you don't need. Yeah, a uh, one-three-one zone in place, <laughs> or your one-three-one offense against to beat the one-three-one zone, you know, or the three-two zone, or the drop in this and that. You don't need those stuff in the first place. Okay, if you got your man-to-man -man down, if you got some, if you, can you teach the fundamentals of what you want to achieve? Are we pushing the ball sideline, baseline? Are we working on getting those split line going? How are we doing with ball pressure? Are we containment team? Are we trying to create turnovers? These are things that you guys have to decide for your team. But those are things that are imperative of getting in or implementing real early. Okay, so you know your players know straight away what you're about. Okay, so those are things that you want to sort of get in before the first the first uh, game. So when it comes to tr planning and putting your season plan together and training pl plans together, you have to know how many training sessions you have. You have to know how to utilize every minute of those training plans or every minute of those uh, sessions before the first game, so you can go in somewhat organized into a practice game. Um, I know clubs like I'm Melbourne Tigers kid, and the, every Melbourne Tigers team has run the shuffle. They can just walk, every kid walks into a into a new team, and they're fully understanding of a half court offense. They don't have to go through what you go through because they've got a club offense. Um, but I'm not saying that's the best way to go, but I think it helps when it comes to these sorts of situations. Staying with your schedule, really important that you stay with the schedule. If you write something down, and this is my training plan, you stick to it. Something's not quite clicking, something's not quite working, move on. Don't worry about it, keep going ahead. Because if you've written down something on a Friday night that didn't work and you need to work on it on that Sunday and you can spend way too much time on a press breaker because we couldn't beat the press and we still can't beat it today, but we, oh, don't worry about the rebound. You'll come back next Friday night and you still can't rebound. Okay, so if you write it down, stick to it. That was John Wooden's one rule. Yeah, anyone heard of John Wooden, the greatest college coach in history? College basketball, UCLA, won 12 titles, national titles, whatever it was. It's one thing, it's a, a woodenism. If you write it down, stick to it. Alternate between hard and easy. Okay, so if you're coming out and you're doing a full court uh, press drill, okay, don't come out and follow it with wind sprints. Don't follow the wind sprints with a cross country run. Don't follow the cross country run with a, you know, a, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Okay. If you're going to go something hard, follow it up with something that may be in a half court, okay? Because you want to get the best out of the kids. A whole court for half now. Yeah, that's fine. But you can still use two ends if you want to get a shooting drill in. Bigs at this end, guards at that end. Let's go. Get as many shots as we can with a drill. So you can still be creative. It doesn't have to be, okay, I've only got half an hour with a full court. I'm going to use 15 minutes for full court drills and 15 minutes for whatever else. Okay, it can be just, okay, I'm going to do 20 minutes in this full court drill of 10 minutes or 5 minutes in this full court drill followed by a 2 minute drill with players at each end. So you can be creative with that because you want to maximise what you get out of the kids. Okay, so if you're going to do a super hard drill, follow it up with something that's a little less taxing on them so they can get their wind back, get their concentration back and then go back into something hard. Yeah. 
Yeah, just to break it up. Yeah, you got to break it up. Uh, when you're planning, your, when you put your plan together, I always stick to two thirds of skill development and work, one third of team play. Two thirds and one third ratio. So you've got 90 minutes, 60 minutes. And the thing is here is like, oh man, but I've got to get my offense in. You can do it. You can still do it in, in a skill development. We'll, we'll cut, touch upon it later with these girls. Um, and I'll show a little bit more about that. But yeah, two thirds skill work, one third team play. Always include special situations. Anyone here old enough to remember Duke in 1991 when Christian Leitner caught the ball and turned around and shot it against Kentucky? Remember that play? It's pretty famous. If you have never seen it, YouTube it. It's one of the great moments of college basketball. True story about that, they worked on that play the very first training session of that season. They worked on that play. It came through one of the greatest, they, they say the greatest college basketball game of all time. They worked on that play on the very first day of the season. So work on your special situations. Don't wait until you've come on a Friday night and you've lost by one the night before, or the Friday night before because you oh, well, had the ball but we didn't have a play to go to. Okay, make sure you go in prepared. So work on special situation stuff. And I think you always begin and end practice with a meeting. So your job as teachers and educators for these kids, so come in, talk to them, tell them what you want to achieve from the training session that day. I had the girls just a little bit before and said, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun, but I need you to work hard and this is what we're gonna cover. Okay, so have a, get, let them know. Then afterwards, review it. How did we go? Did we learn this? Did we get the, can we do this better? Get their feedback. Okay, don't think that just because they're kids, they haven't got something to offer you and educate you with. Okay, it's reciprocal, 360 degrees, the way all coaching's done now. Players have a greater say, for good or worse, but that's the way it is, so uh, get used to it. So, yeah, end, end, begin training with a meeting and end training with a meeting. So there's the six tips that I use for putting a training session together, um, and I think they can be, they can be helpful. The one thing that you have to do before every training session, and I'm looking at this right now. Uh, Mac, can you go get that sweater at the end of the gym, please? Thanks. This is a great area right now. My son uh, is in the 12 eights, um, double bottom age team right now. Uh, I, I, go, I go to the games and I love to wear sunglasses and a hat down because I, I just want to watch the basketball and, and I know people know who I am and they're probably thinking, oh, he's, he's I, I don't, I just want to watch kids play. Um, but one of the things I really struggle with is when I go watch my kids train and I look at the environment. Uh, I watched the sessions this morning um, on your courts. I see eight basketballs laying on the ground at one end, seven at the other. I got a kid sitting on the baseline picking his nose, playing with a tennis ball. I had a girl doing cartwheels down the side between court three and two. And, all, and I had every kid had their bags along the sideline. And all I could think of is unsafe unsafe. I'm going to share a little story with you uh, about Melbourne United last year. We had a player at Todd Blanchfield now with Sydney Kings. Todd missed six games last year um, with a torn groin. What happened at one of our training sessions was that someone fell over, a member of staff wiped the floor, just threw the towel and it sat right where the A in basketball, Frankston basketball sits, right in the middle. Just lay on the floor, just like that sweater was up there. Anyways, as it happens, Chris Golding goes down injured. Um, the game before with a rolled ankle. Uh, David Anderson might have been injured at the time, or someone, Owen Odigi, ODA was uh, injured at the time. And Todd Blanchfield goes and chases a loose ball, throws it back in, steps on that towel, turns back to take off, and tears his groin. He's out six games. We're already missing these players. We lose the next five games. We start the season two and seven. Um, we miss. We go right up to the last game of the season and miss out on the playoffs. People lose jobs. A guy, a player, lost six weeks. A coach lost his job. If you make finals, you have a chance to win. If you win, you keep your job. Um, all because the court wasn't safe that day. So again, I, I go. I walk in the gyms. I see so much bullshit going on at some of the Saturdays down here. Is a zoo. It's even worse over at Lang Warren. You come in on a Sunday, you see unsafe things happening. Make your court safe and demand it of other coaches as well. The kids, their bags lined up along here, no longer. Bags go along here. And if you're over at Lang Warren and there's not this much space, 
put them on the bench, make the parents stand at the end. Okay, the kids are playing five on five at the end of my son's training session this morning. Parents are sitting on the bench. Kids are sitting on the floor on the sideline. No parents, piss off. <laughs> this is a kid's time. Okay, so ensure that your kids as coaches, firstly, before your plan is, the first thing on your plan should be safe environment. Make sure it's safe. And what we've got here right now, it's as safe as it can be. As long as those basketballs don't come on the court. Um, so let's get into it, I guess. Uh, I've had a meeting with the girls. I've told them what I want to achieve today and what our points of emphasis are going to be. So that's what should be the first thing you talk about, points of emphasis and what you want to achieve. Now, normally we'd start a session with a dynamic warm-up. Okay, and we've all seen the dynamic warm-up. It's very fashionable. You've got kids running along doing this, touching their toes and, you know, all this sort of stuff. That's great. Let's pretend we've done that. Okay, um, if we want a clinic on dynamic warm-up, because I think it's a clinic unto itself, uh, we've got Eric Hollingsworth as a daughter here at the club. Eric's the former head coach of the Australian uh, athletics team. So he's a little bit more qualified to deliver that and can do it better than I can. So put some pressure on people and see if we can get him down here. Um, so let's assume we've done our dynamic warm-up. But the one thing we can do with our dynamic warm-up is you can include balls. It doesn't always have to be just, you know, exercise. We can sort of make it a basketball-related one. So I'll just do one. This is off the top of the head, not on the plan. I should have planned it. Girls, come on over, please. Leave your basketballs there on the, on the ledge, not on the floor. Thank you. Just line up two lines here. One at each point of the key. One right here as well. I was gonna, just want you to run up here. Okay. One, two. Run. One, two. Okay, from here, just want drop steps like this. All the way to the baseline, join the end of the line. Go again. First girl goes, gets the elbow, second girl goes. We're ready? Can we do that? Here we go, let's go. This is an example of a dynamic warm up. Just add a little bit of basketball into it. Just a nice three quarter, three quarter pace here, girls. Three quarter pace. Karen, if you jump on, make sure that everyone's technique's right while I still talk to people. One of the things that we've got to do a better job as well as coaches is utilize our assistance. We don't have eyes everywhere. Pick kids up just for the sake of flow. Often we let stuff go. No, pull them up. Say, so just pull one kid to the side and say, hey, you need to drop your hips. So come here, come here, come here. When we do this, I need you down like this. You ready? Like this, drop your hips like this. Bam, bam, bam. So take the time, tell them what you want and get them to do it. Matt, oh, sorry. Don't want slides here. I want drop steps like this, okay? Bam, ha, ha. You ready? Go. So take the time to correct them. Too often, just for the flow of training, we let stuff go and we create bad habits. So take time to correct, okay? Hold that up, girls, good job. Grab a basketball, get to the side of the court. So what I like to do, we get a 10 minute warm up all together, okay? A little bit of that sort of movement, human movement stuff, and then we get a little bit of ball handling in as well. Sideline there, girls. Spread out, please. We're gonna take two dribbles. One, two, double crossover. One, two, double crossover. So we get to the other side, ball's in our right hand. Not your left, because I know you don't like to use your right too much. Stays in your right. One, two, double crossover. Done two, double crossover. Let's go. Eyes up, eyes up. Back with the left hand, here we go. Good, this time, we're gonna go one, two, Ball stays in the right hand, cross it over, inside, outside the body cylinder, bring it back. One, two, whoo, whoo, one, two, whoo, whoo, here we go. Outside that body cylinder, whip it across, left hand coming back, here we go. That's it, good. Coming back, right hand, we go one, two, through the legs, through the legs again, one, two, through the legs, through the legs, here we go. Eyes up, eyes up, we're working our handles. We're allowed to mess up here. This is a house of messing up. Because we get better when we mess up. Go back the other way, left hand. Okay, this time, one, two, round the back, through the legs, inside out, back to the right hand. One, two, one, two, let's go. Ah, through the legs, not around the back. Hold it. Back it up. We got 
series serial non-listeners here. Here we go. One, two, around the back, inside out. One, two. Okay, one, two. Right hand, ball doesn't leave. Here we go. Good. Left hand coming back, so you've got it. Ball doesn't leave the left hand. Ball doesn't leave the left hand. All right, that'll do, ladies. Nice. Okay, so just something simple like that. Get that going for five minutes after you've done a five-minute warm-up. There's ten minutes. The girls are ready to roll. Now, how long you get on a Tuesday? Hour? One hour? Who says that's not long enough? Hard to get, hard to get a session in one hour, isn't it? So you don't really want to spend ten minutes warming up. So you come in 10 minutes early. Do something off the court with warm-ups. Think laterally. It doesn't have to be out here. We warm up. Got an oval out the back. Let's do two laps of that. Or well, if you're really creative, let's get some ladders out there. Do some ladder work. You know, think outside the square. It doesn't have to be in the gym. Maximize your time because you want to relay as much information as you can. I'm not relaying a whole lot of information doing that. That's warming up. Okay. So 10 minutes of warm-ups. Then I want to do 10 minutes of shooting. Now, fashionable to put bigs up one end, guards up the other and do your shooting that way. Okay, if you've got a full court, most of you probably only have half a court. Is that right? Okay, so we'll do half court stuff. Um, I never ever want to say this. And for those of you who've been around me before, you know that I have a strong hatred of this, but ladies, can you please line up on the baseline, half each side, we're gonna do the horseshoe drill. <laughs> The horseshoe drill. Who does this? Okay, can I ask that you, no one ever does this training, never ever does this drill again? Okay, yeah, okay, let's have a look at just how mind numbingly bad this drill is. You're our first shooter. Go, here we go. Good, let's go next. Good, I can't even watch it, keep going. So I'm at my son's game last weekend, the practice game's out at Bob uh, Knox, the uh, State Basketball Centre. And they're out in court six, I think it is, so way up the back, because he's in a low team. And there's no way of getting around there, except when walking on the baselines. And you've got this big, beautiful, shiny new court, and they're warming up out of bounds and no one can get around. So they've got all these people piled up saying, oh, we want to get through, but the kids are warming up. Stop, please, stop. Everyone, stop. Okay. Tears at my heartstrings to see that. Every team I see on a Friday night, Saturday morning down here, you see it everywhere. Everywhere. It's a disease that came to Australia in the mid-90s. And I'm sorry if I'm offending people who run it, because really, there's nothing wrong with running it. Everyone does it. Okay, and this is a personal opinion. Tell me what skills are involved when we run this. Footwork. Shooting, footwork. Tell me about the footwork. What footwork we got here? Uh, so it's, it's almost yep. So yep. So shooting and footwork. Um, I'd say minimalist passing because we pass it. Catching, um, but it's very low level passing and catching because it's not, it's not, not game like. Um, I think the drill stinks. And I'm going to tell you why. For those reasons, it's low level passing, shooting. And I know you get shots off, but I don't understand why we're out of bounds. I don't understand why we have this beautiful big court, which we need four other courts here, please. Um, and we don't utilize it. So please, ladies, can I get a line here and a line opposite? Two balls right here. I'm glad Rob Gaze has expressed this to you, his disdain for the drill, because we share it. And again, don't, don't feel like this is a personal attack, it's not. It's, it's, uh, the, the reason why I do this, because I know most coaches use it. Um, you brave enough to say yes, I do, thank you. Yeah. Um, yep. 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 Okay. This is not layups, this is also a warm up drill. Um, and I just want to, you can use it exactly the same. Um, but we talk about the skills that you utilise and the amount of time. And I go back to when I 
came in and started putting three teams over two courts. It's like, oh, we need a whole court because we need, we can utilize and bring in greater skill sets, expose more in a short amount of time. What I want this line to do over here, okay? You're a wing and you need to get yourself open. How are you getting open? You know, walk your man down one way, explode the other way. Yep, that's good. Except we want to get open at the free throw line. So we're going to walk. I like to call it. You're, you're too young. Everyone remember uh, John Travolta in uh, the Staying Alive? Yeah. I like to strut. So you strut, bam, and now we go. Woo. All right, so we strut and then go. So we're walking our man low on the slick down. We're exploding to the ball. Okay, we've got our target hands up. The ball comes to me. I catch it, plant foot, pivot, square up, okay? Catch it in a seated stance. And whatever shot we're gonna to dictate to you right now, the first one's gonna be pump fake, rip on the hip, go to the rim. You're gonna come in and rebound the ball, okay? Once you've rebounded the ball, take it out of the net. We get out from under the backboard because that's a no-no. We come along, we throw the ball out to the girl who's just laid it in, and after you've laid the ball in, you're going up, sprinting, backside to the sideline, down, give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball, receive it, hand it off. Same drill, same shots. What drills are we going through? Okay, so we've got passing, fake one, make one. We've got cutting, we've got catching, we've got squaring up, we've got the whatever shot we determine. We've got rebounding, we've got inbounds passing, we've got outlet, uh, inbounds receiving, all those extra skills on what's virtually the same drill inverted. Okay? Now, the reason why I bring it up is not to embarrass anybody or to shame anyone. This is what we've got to think about with every drill that we do at training. How can I make it better? What is useful? What is useless? Eradicate the useless. Improve upon. Add your own touch to everything. To everything and try and increase or maximize what you get out of each session. So, we're gonna go one after the other. Once you rip and go to the rim, you're walking your man down while that happens, and then you're coming in. We ready? These girls have never done these drills, so we expect a little bit of fault here. Okay, firstly, you, you ready? Ah, uh, you don't look ready, get down. Ready, good. Okay, you ready? Let's go, good, hot, explode. Good. Now hold that right there. I have to close that down. Okay, one of the things, and this is how, sorry, I have to teach it now because I can't let things fly. You're gonna remember this for the rest of your life. Everyone remember Luke Longley? Seven foot two and a shock of red hair. Played NBA for 11 odd years. Everyone loved him, the first Australian in the NBA. So we, oh, Aussie Luke, we love him. Drove me nuts. Couldn't stand him. Nothing, beautiful man. The reason why I don't like him, because if you're seven foot two with a big red afro, you should be angry at the world. You should be just wanting to just explode every time you take the basketball court. And he's just like, yeah, it's okay. I'm okay with it. Very gentle, lovable bloke who couldn't rebound. Because every time a shot went up, he ran at the rim. It would hit the rim and go over his head and he's running back to where it is. So when we teach rebounding, stay out of the keyway. Read it, read it, read it. Is it coming off the rim? Oh, I've got to get to the spot where it's going to. Don't stand here. The only shot you can get when you stand here is the one that goes in. Okay? So let's go back to the start and go through that drill. We learned something today, girls? One thing, good. Here we go. Ha! Hands up, get down low, drop your hips, ready, rebound it, take it out. Beautiful! Hulch! Outlet! Backside to the sideline, good! Good. Rip. Excellent. Don't take it out on a miss. Here we go. Outlet, outlet. Good. Okay, hold that right there. That's a warm up drill, right? It's exactly the same as the other one. You get the same shots and you can develop this. First one's a rip right, second shot's a rip left. Let's do it with a catch and shoot. Here we go. Catch and shoot. Now we're going to test the rebounders. Don't let it go over your head. Good. Oops. Ball's right here. Here we go. Good. Hands up. Hands up. Oh, Luke Longley's in the house. Here we go. Oh, there's another Luke Longley. Stay out of the keyway. Read it off the rim. 
Seven foot two, average four rebounds a game. No excuses. Hold it. Okay, good. Now, if we were to develop and spend time with the girls, we don't take the ball out off misses. We grab the rebound. Ha! Got it. Bang! Outlet it. Okay? Not, oh, the ball missed. Let me take it out of bounds. That's not the rules. Got to stick with the rules here. Okay? The other thing also, I know because this is all new to you that we haven't developed this and I'm not your coach, and you're trying to do things right, and sometimes when you do things right, you do things rather dainty, because you don't want to mess up greatly, go mess up greatly. Go mess up like the king, okay? Because we don't care, we just want to see you work hard, okay? I'd rather you mess up big than mess up small. So we do this at game speed, and we mess up at game speed. We're gonna do it for just 30 seconds here, we right? Okay, 30 seconds. Okay, go, hard, hard, hard. Next, let's go, hard, hard, hard. Good, that's nice, Bonnie. I like the pace on that. You strutted. Backside to the sideline. Backside to the sideline. Don't clap. Ask for it. Use your voices. Hold that right there. That's 30 seconds. Tell me how we do that better, please, everybody. Just come up. Things that you see. How can we do that better? How can we do it better? Talk. Lovely. Thank you. Talk. Talk. Ball outlet here, outlet! So we get him talking at the start of a training session too. Do we talk in the other one? Kind of? You call a name? Yeah, okay. You don't call a name in a game though, do you? Some kids do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Outlet, outlet! That's game talk. Okay, so we initiate game talk. And one of the things we want to do with girls especially the guys are a little easier to introduce and get them introduced to. But I'm going to tell you this right now, girls, I, I think you've got the best age group at the club. Under 14 girls, the best age group at the club. Because we've got some beautiful athletes. We don't want ladies. We don't want young girls. We want athletes. Ruthless, strong, determined, ambitious athletes. Who aren't shy about using their voices and calling for an outlet. We okay with that? Yeah. So let's do it one more time. 30 seconds. Outlet! Outlet! Here we go. Good. I don't hear a determined athlete there. Hold it right there at 30 seconds. You girls are too nice right now. I'm taking the back of your compliment about under 14 girls being the best here. You're okay. You're okay. We need better than okay. Shaley, where'd you throw your inbounds pass from? I know where you did, so just say it. But you'd use your right hand because it's the outside hand because of the defenders. Here, it's further away, right? So bring it out from under the backboard. Little things you can teach. Get out from under the backboard. Okay, the other drill, you actually have to be under the backboard. Okay, so get out from under. Okay, uh, what else can we do better? Talks one. Catch the ball. Beautiful, that was on my mind too. Tell me why, what, what were they doing wrong? Oh, on, on this, and the, the catch and shoot, okay, I had something else in mind, okay, good, yep, yeah. okay. So that, is that a catching issue or a passing issue? We, you can't determine where you're catching it, <laughs> so it's got to be a passing issue. So firstly, I didn't see any pump fakes on this either. What's the old rule, the old adage, fake a pass to make a pass, that's a tough pass. Fake it into the post, get the defense hands moving this way, opens up that pass, all right? So we're down every time, bam, on the hip, pass it into the bread basket, right into the numbers. And what I like on this one is I almost say on the inside shoulder, because if you throw it underneath the inside shoulder, you're spinning me into it. Look, that's straight into my shot pocket, okay? So if you can, any time in a game, if you want to spin someone to the rim, inside shoulder, okay? Another little tidbit for you. Okay, so good. Excellent point. The one thing I would also bring up, 
Who here wants to coach a running team, a team that gets up and down the floor? Everyone should. You know why? It's fun to play, it's fun to watch, and the kids get tuckered out, which means you can sub them and they don't bitch and moan, which is fantastic. You can rotate players better if they're running up and down the court and working hard. Now, one of the things if you want to run is you want to see the floor go in and inbound the ball to me. Inbound the ball. Okay? Now, get caught underneath that basket. Now, here. What can I see from here? That way. Now, what can I see? I can see you, but you ain't that way. Who's up that end? No, no, stay there. It's not... Don't, don't. All these girls are that way. Now, if they're running the court trying to get up and down the floor and create easy basket baskets, okay, I can't see them if I catch the ball like this. So I talk about getting your ass over the sideline. Bang! Hang that thing over the sideline. And now when I catch it, I can see all of you. I can see somebody out there in the foyer. I can see mums over there with a pram. I can see the whole gymnasium, okay, when I catch the ball like this. So if someone's running up there, I can, wow, oh, there you go, all the way up the sideline, they're off for a layup. I can see the floor. So hang your butt, butt over the sideline and see the floor. A valuable rule for your point guards. Get wide, see the floor, got it, whap. Now don't come dribbling up the floor on the sideline if the pass isn't there. You gotta try and get that into the mid cylinder now. Okay, so you don't get caught on the sideline, but catch it on the sideline. Anything else anyone see? I'd have one more thing, and it's especially with the girls encouraging noise and sound. Get that rebound, ah! Rip it off the board. I want to feel like you're working hard even if you're not. I want it to sound like you're working hard even if you're not, okay? Little theatrics on this one wouldn't kill. Ah! Ooh! Outlet, okay? We're gonna try it one more time. We're gonna look after Steve's passing. We're gonna make sure we've got the outlets. We're gonna get the chatter going. We're gonna get the effort going on the rebounds. And we're going to nail this one here, girls. Here we go. 30 seconds. Let's go. Fake a pass and make a pass. Get that on the inside shoulder. Miss. Ah! Outlet. Hang that butt over the sideline. Hang it over the sideline. Good. Good. Beautiful. Stop right there. Not bad, ladies, not bad. You can grab a, grab a seat now, that's good. So again, the point of all that was one, you want to do 10 minutes of shooting, okay? We've done our warm-ups, get 10 minutes of shooting, that's game-like shooting, and you can work on a whole plethora, oh, that's a big word for me, a whole bunch of uh, different drills and fundamentals involved and try and maximize as many fundamentals into every drill. And do it, just think about the trainings that you did today and how you can make it better. How can I add more into it or create more points of emphasis on it, okay? Am I gonna think about, is it important to take the ball out from underneath the basket? Well, it will be that time that you need to throw a baseball pass up with four seconds on the clock to try and get a game winner. So if you've been teaching that from the get-go, it's something that's just gonna become, become habit. So every little tiny detail, see if you can wrap that in. Simon, that I just did then? Uh, no, not so much. It was more about I would do it for 10 minutes, but. Yeah, you've got to gauge everything to, to uh, the standard of your team. Okay, so you have to decide what's most important to you. Okay, so at this stage, catching the ball is probably more important than getting your butt over the sideline. Huh? But, but you know what? If you want to keep the kids entertained, making the noises on the rebound, they love that. I love that stuff. So, is that the sort of thing that you might implement your drill and you look at it first and go, well, there's 25 things we need to improve on, but today I'll worry about the three most important. Next week I'll do the other four. Absolutely. Sort of idea. Absolutely. Yeah, you've got to prioritise. You've got 90 minutes. What's most important to you? That's why we write it down straight after the game. And those are going to be your key points of emphasis, whatever you wrote after the game, and you bring that to your Sunday training session. Defensive drill. So, we've done our 10 minutes of warm ups, ball handling, 10 minutes of shooting. Now we want to get some defensive drills in. Again, I ask that you just get a catalog of all different defensive drills, hundreds of defensive drills out there. Create your own if you want, they're fine. I just created that warm-up drill, never seen it before in my life. You can do these things on the run. Um, 
and then just come with something different that recreates the same point of emphasis as we're talking about. So you, you might, um, and you can do also like staging, that it develops over time, builds over time. So girls, I'm gonna ask you to have, uh, actually Karen, why don't we stand on the sideline here? You're at the 45, I'll be on the other 45. Girls, you're aligned here at the point, hustle up, let's go. Need one basketball out there. In the middle, okay? Okay, we're gonna do what's called the Black Hawk drill. Okay, so what's your name again? Chelsea. Chelsea, I need that, Chelsea. So you're down in the defensive stance right here, okay? This is your player right now, okay? You're gonna start with the ball. Karen, you just come up a little bit. You're gonna pass to one of us, okay? And you get this basket cut, okay? And what you're gonna do is on the fly to the ball, sorry, you go over there to Chelsea and catch the ball, okay? Throw it to Chelsea, hold it. I'm defense right now, so I'm in stance, I'm over the ball, the ball goes, okay? I jump on the fly to the ball. You're gonna basket cut, I'm gonna drop. While that's happening, kick it straight to the point. Now I'm working on my closeout. Shot! Kick it that side. <sighs> cut. Drop the level of the ball, kick it up. Good. Shot! Kick it that way. Good. Drop the level, quick up. Shot! So we're gonna get to the bottom of the circle each time. Now you girls come up straight up back at the top. Now, coach right here is gonna say go on one of the times that it gets kicked back and you're gonna drive and try and take them one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so Chelsea, you're back here. Two or three ball reversals, and it's working on jumping to the ball. So we do 10 minutes of this, or, or three minutes of this, and then go into another drill. Okay, here we go. Good. Shot. Good. Jump to the ball, jump to the ball, jump to the ball. Oh, oh you gotta stay there. No one gets across your chest. So you jump to the ball on the floor, jump to the ball on the fly to the ball. Okay, so she can't get across your chest. Jump to the ball, good. Back, back up high. Shot. Live, go. One on one, hold it. That's a foul. Put two hands on the ball handle straight away, it's a foul. Okay, girls, don't stop there. Once you've gone through, come straight back up to the top. Okay, switch it up. Chelsea, jump in on offense. Yep, new defender. Here we go. Yep. Good, ball's reverse. Ball, shot. Close it out, close it out. Need some voice. No, no one gets across your chest. Good, shot. shot. Live, go. Hold it right there. Okay, so everyone kind of get the picture on that. Now, what are the points of emphasis on that one from you people? Tell me what the point of emphasis is in that drill. Strong close out. Strong close out. Good technique on close out. So on our close out, we stay down, we rip hands through nostrils, got our hands up on the shot, we keep our stance and we don't get lifted. Okay, so good. We've got to make sure we teach that over and over. What else have we got? Covering the cover. Yeah, cover. No one gets across your chest. So the ball's going from here to there. I jump across. If they keep coming, I keep jumping across. They're never getting across my chest. I've got my arm bar out. They're never going to get across me. That's mano to mano stuff. We're fighting to the death on that one. You can't beat me on that. I won't allow it. That's the stuff that we've got to teach on that, especially with our ladies, okay? One on athletes, not girls, athletes. Okay, so let's get them physical and tough on that. So encourage the offense to keep trying to get over the chest, which is encouraging the defense to keep, keep them from getting over. So that's important, good. Jump into the ball on the fly to the ball, really important. It's too late when the ball's caught for me to get across. Because if I'm a good offensive player, and I catch that ball and you're not already on the nail, bang! I'm getting to the middle of the floor and I'm creating for myself and my teammates. So we need the defense there. So it's gotta be move on the fly to the ball. Girls are really bad at talking then. Nice girls, aren't they? They're a bit shy, okay? They don't wanna express themselves. And one of the things with the, with the girls, they don't wanna sort of get out and be a show off. The boys, they can't stop it. Okay, with the girls, they, they kind of just want to, you know, be cool. I need a show off. I need a voice. I need to see an athlete who says, I don't care if I look or sound stupid. I'm just going for it. Okay, get another passer up. Okay, get a volunteer. Coach, Paul, can I get you on the other, on the other wing? Karen, you're up. We're going to do this one more time, ladies. I want to be on the sideline so I can observe. You're on defense to start with, Zoe. Set, hold it. We don't play defense arm and half distance, do we? What's your coach teaching you? Get up on that ball, pressure it. Set, go. Kick it up there, Paul, no, Paul. 
Hey, hold it. Woo! You catch that thing, whip it straight back. Here we go. Whip it straight back. Close that out. Hold it. That ain't a close out. Shot. You got to catch that ball like you're ready to catch and shoot on this one, okay? Ready? Go. Don't let it cross your chest. Let's go, one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, let's go. Next one, next up, let's go, next up. Already been on defense, get another player. No, hold it. Already been on D, need another player. Listen, already been on defense, need another player. Let's go. Close it out. Nothing across your chest. No one gets over your chest. Ah, back. Got to hold that ball a little while in the middle. Wings get rid of it. Wings get rid of it. Go. Live. Good. Hold that up right there. So again, we're working on that. We're working on a little bit of one-on-one -on -one skill. You get every player to go on defense, make it quick. You can do it two ends. Get over that one real quickly. Okay, this time. Line here. Line over here. Split it. Line on each side, just above the, uh, the elbows right here. Good. Uh, two, in, two in line, get on defense, balls. Yep, good. Okay, balls right here. Where do we start? Yes, thank you, you have been coached, good. Okay, now hold that. We want to keep that ball out of the middle. So we're going to slightly just, yeah, good. So you're playing, make sure your foot's outside that outside foot, okay? Inside foot. Okay, we're down here and we're help position. Okay, we're in a defensive triangle. We're on ball, man, and on the point of it. Okay, when that ball goes flying across, where do we get to? Okay, on the fly to the ball, we're closing that out. Okay, we stay down with our hips and you're going to jump into help position. Okay, hold it. We're influencing that ball out of the middle. So I've got to have my inside foot over her inside foot. And no, we don't want to open up too much. We don't want to give her a lane to drive. We want to send her to that corner if we can. So again, yep, that's it, beautiful. Maybe even just up a hair. Okay, good. So take the middle, active hands. Yep, good, good, nice. All right, ready, kick the ball back. Good, kick it back. Good, kick it back. Good, good. Offense becomes defense, defense off. Let's go. Offense, defense, defense off. Here we go. Straight into it. Transition, good. So change it up. Offense, defense, let's go. Hold it right there. What can we do better? I missed that again, sorry. Close stance instead of open. Yeah, we don't want to be too open. Good. Got to make sure we're close on that one. Ball! Ball! Ah! I want to hear that. I got the ball! Ball! You act like a lunatic. This girl's going to be scared of you. Oh, Jesus! What's she doing? Okay? Be confident. Be brave. Be vivacious. Okay? Out on the floor. Okay, and communicate with all your teammates because one day you may be in a gym in China, 20,000 mad Chinese people screaming and yelling and your teammates need to hear you over the top. I got ball! And they can still, over the top of those 20,000 screaming fans, hear your voice. And that's important, you develop that right now. You've got to learn how to project, okay? I'm quiet at home, people. This is my basketball voice. I walk inside the lines, I get rowdy. Out here, I'm like, hey, how you doing? Nice to see you. Okay, so out here, we need personality. We need athletes. We need voices. Okay? The other thing I'd like to see, and this is something when you've got your own team that you work on, is that when I go change over, it's ball goes straight to the floor. Ball, 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 ball! Straight into it. Okay? We're going to try this one. So defense, when I say change it over, put that ball on the floor, make the offense pick it up, and you're all over it like a rash. We ready? Go! Switch! 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 Hold that right there, great job. One more thing. When you're doing a drill, and again, this is, you've got to try and be a self-critic on everything you do. Everything is a defensive drill, right? 
This is defensive drill. How easy is it to get your kids to catch that ball, turn and face triple threat every time they catch it? How easy is it? It's not. It's not at all, is it? Especially when you're coaching boys. They want to get that thing, ah, go 100 mile an hour. They want to get that ball, get down triple threat. So you can teach a secondary aspect to the sport. I don't want to see you girls catch the ball and just pinging it at each other. Get that ball. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, get down and get busy. Okay, you catch that thing in triple threat because it takes 17,000 repetitions of a movement to create muscle memory. And that's why it's so damn hard to teach them stinking boys to get into a triple threat. The girls are better. Okay, 17,000 repetitions to teach muscle memory. So we're gonna try and get it in 15. We're shortcutting on this one. Catch that ball in triple threat, ready to play, then kick it back. Set, go. Good, hold that up. Nice job, girls, good. Any questions regarding that? But with that, you develop that into one-on-one, -on -one, the first black hawk, you two-on-two, -two, then you can get two wings and a point guard and you start working on it. Then it turns into a shell drill, then it's five-on-five, -five, and then you've got a team that can defend. Okay, so it's progressions. Another thing you need to keep in mind with regards to your training plan, again, 10 minutes of defense, just individual defense right here. I might do one-on-one -on -one for two minutes, two-on-two -two for three minutes, three-on-three -three for three minutes. There's my defensive stuff virtually done. Okay, then in the next session I might go straight into shell drill. Might do shell drill with cutters, might do shell drill with dribble penetration. All sorts of things, you can change up the same drill to get you know, a different aspect or a different point of emphasis. So we've done 10 minutes of warm up, 10 minutes of shooting. Now we've done our 10 minutes of defensive drills. Now we want to do transition. Now before you say it, but we only got half a court, I get that, we can still do transition. Let's get our three lines right here. One just here. One in the middle, one just on the other side of the, uh, the keyway. Ball starts in the middle. Let's just start with the Mary Mac drill. We want to work on two on ones. If your kids, your teams, had a 90% conversion rate on their advantageous offensive uh, situation, so a three on two or a two on one, you wouldn't lose many games, would you? It'd be great. It's, it's, especially, again, like harping on the boys. You guys, you girls have got it good. The boys are just trying to wing it, hard cradle the ball and do something off ESPN in a three on two situation, inevitably it goes sailing into the stands, okay? But these, these are drills that you wanna just do ad nauseum. Ad nauseum, you cannot do enough advantageous drills. So this one's gonna be the Merrimack drill, you're gonna pass it from the middle to the wing while we're running to half court. It goes to the wing, Chelsea kicking it back to the middle, back over this side, back to the middle. By the time it gets to you back in the middle the second time, You'll be in the center of the court, slam that ball down, we're going back two on one. Okay, now, I'm gonna let this go and then I'll correct you because I know there's gonna be a mistake to start with. We ready? Go. Slam it down, no, 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 no. So on the second one, we slam it down, not the third one. Second one, here we go, go, two on one. Good, now that's part, we gotta do that eight more times in a row and we get our 90% conversion, which would be great. Hold it up. Who went to the ball when the ball got slammed down? Who went to it? Chelsea, did you know she was going to it? How'd you know? Slam the ball down the middle. I got it. Because if both of you go together at the same time, what's gonna happen? You're gonna clunk heads and we don't issue helmets. So you gotta communicate again. We want athletes to communicate out on the floor. I got the ball. Who's the ball handler out of the two of you? You're quick to point the finger. Most bigs, and you're kind of a pseudo big, would say, yeah, I'm the ball handler. They'd be lying, but they call themselves ball handlers. Okay, so yeah, take charge. You're the guard in the two. Take charge in that one. You ready? Let's go. Put it down, let's go. Nice, good work, hold up. So there's a transition drill that we can do with inside the half court, okay? Now I do 10 minutes of transition drills as well. Not necessarily if we've got a full court, then we get full court transition drills going as well. Get as many as possible. Now we go back to our Friday night. 
I'll go back to our Thursday night. For those of you who don't know, I'm an assistant coach with Melbourne United. I think I may have said something before. Um, and we've done, we've had a horrid history recently of being a bad rebounding team. We're the best rebounding team in the NBL this year. We have, and we lost the rebound count by 10 to the second worst rebounding team in the league on Thursday night and got our asses handed to us by, uh, up in Cairns. And that hurts my feelings because I love rebounders. That's why I'm such an anti-Luke Longley guy. I can't handle people who don't rebound. It's, it's, it's an important part of the game for me. Um, let's say Thursday night we stuck and we're like, okay, we've got to work on a transition. Rebounding is kind of one of those things that you try to work on inside other drills. We're going to run a uh, three on two full court transition. Okay, so I need three offensive players in the middle of the floor. Let's go. First three in that line. I need two defenders up here, two defenders at the other end. Okay, hold it. That leaves three of you left over, right? I want an outlet here, outlet, outlet over there, an outlet up the other end. Mac, you're on the floor, where you at? Can you go grab her, please? Outlet on this side. Okay, so rebounding is an issue for us, right? I want to run my transition drill, but I've got to somehow create this, that we're going to reward rebounders. So we're going walking this one out, girls. Three on two this way. Three on two. Okay, just walk it out. Get yourself a shot. Okay, good. Ball goes up. Go contest it. Shot goes up. It misses. Rebound right there. You get to go on offense that way. So you rebound it. Ah! Pivot. This way. Good, because we that, kick that ball on the outside hip. Outlet the ball. You're sprinting. No, 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 you get out of there. You didn't rebound. You don't get to play. Bring the ball to the middle. Running this way. You're on the other outlet. We're going three on two that way. Hold that up. So what we're doing here is we're going to work on our transition, but we reward the rebounders going up and back. Now we're going to play this first player to three rebounds. If you go in and make a bucket, if you go in and make a bucket, rip it out of the net. I would knock my mother over to get a rebounder. So you just ah, get it. Even out of the net, it counts as a rebound. Okay, so we are getting rebounds. That's the priority here. Get the rebound. If you don't get it, so we had three on two this way, need two fill on the sides, two on defense here. Okay, like you guys just did automatically. Are we ready to go three on two this way? Ready? All right, we're live, girls, girls. Hey, hold it. We're live. And if we mess up, we mess up with gusto, don't we? Okay, here we go. Let's go. Hard, hard, hard. Rebound, who's got it? Got one, hit, outlet, good, run, hold it. Keep going, yep, keep going. Go get a chain, go get a chain. Ball's not out of bounds. Get a shot up, get a shot up. It's three on two, don't run the clock out. Get on the boards, he's got it. Counter buddy, go, outlet, run. Need two defenders, two outlets. Rebound it, outlet. I'm not hearing any sound effects. Ah, on the rebound. Rebound, ah, outlet, go. Rebound. Hold it right there. That'll do. Very, very quiet. Okay, bring it in, ladies. I've really overestimated you. I said you're the best age group in the club. But you're not athletes right now. You're not playing like athletes. Ball, first pass. Ball, ball. I got first pass. I got first. You've got to be athletes out there, okay? Communicate. And when you get that rebound, it's first of three rebounds. Oh, I got it. It's number one and start talking a bit of trash. I got two coming, two more coming. Oh, that's number two, I'm one off, try and stop me. Have a little bit of fun, a little bit of personality, okay? So that's one way of saying, okay, Friday night, we stunk on the boards, how am I gonna work on my rebounding, emphasize it in a, def in a, def in a drill like this? Now again, the skill sets we employ in this one, rebounding obviously, outlet passes, communication, ball, man, uh, defensive strategies, uh, all these things that we can bring in 
and you can maximize it, okay? Keep thinking, what else can I bring into this? What else can I maximize and teach as much as I possibly can? Good point. We gotta make sure that we prioritize down in the younger age groups, but as these kids become knowledgeable and older, keep throwing stuff at them and keep pulling them up when they don't do it. Okay, so we've done our 10 minutes of transition drills. Whether it's in the half court or the full court. Now we wanna do offensive drills. It's universal offense, anyone know floppy offense? It's kind of universal, it's just turnouts. Pretty simple, yep. Okay, uh, ladies, can I just get a player here? under the basket, a big standing just at the, a big standing just here, so need a big zone, come in, oh yeah, Georgia, come in, yep, and a guard up top, okay, rest of you just off to the sideline, okay, so it's going to work on, say that we're Frankston Blues and we run floppy action, I'm going to get you right at the point here, okay, Georgia, you're sitting a down screen, Charlotte's coming off, no, just right here, right here, nice, wide, yep, good, drop your hips, good. Okay, get those elbows up. You're going to cream someone with this, hopefully. Getting up, down a little bit. You don't want to cream your teammate. No, bring him, bring him in. Right there, that's good. Okay, come off that. Looking to catch the ball out here. Good. Okay, we're going to turn inside you. You're going to open up. Okay, you're going to shoot the ball. All right, you rebound and put back any misses. Okay, ready? This is the first action in floppy offense. Let's go. Yeah, curl to the elbow. Curl to the elbow to start. Here we go. No, 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 no. You're coming off that screen. Okay, you're here, you're here, you're working your man, you're coming off. George's great screen, she's down there trying to kill someone. You catch that ball, bam, straight into your shot. You ready? Here we go. Go, good. Nice, open up, now get on the boards. Good. Rotate, you stay big, guards rotate. So it's just a very simple shooting drill, but it's working on the floppy offense. So we break down our offense into drills. That we can say, okay, we run an offense, what are we looking for? Who, what, what do we run here as structures? I know everybody's all over the place, they run their own stuff, but has anyone got an offense that they run? No, uh, what? You, you probably don't have an offense. You, you're running catch the ball offense. Yeah. Uh, Tony, Jonathan, you guys run? I ran flow last year. You ran flow last year? Okay. So let's go fly. Ball's up here, big with the big. Ball start with the big here. You got a guard right here, the guard over here. Same sort of thing. How are we gonna get shooting drill or concentrating on our offense? Well, let's go to guard to guard screen on this one. And you're gonna curl on this. Out, yep, coming back. Hold that ball, I didn't say pass it. Dribble back to Bonnie on this one with the dribble handoff, DHO. Okay, bam, you roll, I shoot. Okay, you ready on that one? So guard to guard screen, you curl it, you come back off and the uh, dribble handoff and we're gonna get elbow jumper out of it. Here we go, good. Curl that one, not there, good, dribble handoff, turn the corner, bam. That's action out of the flow offense. So you can break it down and what happens, and especially with girls, grab a seat girls. You bring in a half court offense, and I know Frankston used to run five out motion. And what you would get is one pass with boys and they're ripping and going. What you would get with girls is that they pass, basket cut, kind of empty out and they kick that ball around the perimeter for four and a half minutes without a shot. So in, what you get is you get way too conservative and boys way too over eager to put the ball on the floor and try and score. What they need is an end play with the continuity offense. You need to teach them, hey, if we run this with the guard to guard skill, we curl that one with DHO, we we'll try and get a pick and roll on that as well. Give them an end play. Now you do this stuff over and over again, and you're teaching them how to score out of their offense without them even realizing it. All of a sudden, this becomes natural to them to run this sort of stuff. Okay, people are criticizing Chris Golding at the moment about not scoring and not shooting. Those in, inside the house, we want him shooting the ball. But we are so pleased and so wrapped with how he is setting everybody on our team up off the ball. Because all the attention comes to him. He's running down here, setting brutal screens on guys to free up. Casey Prather coming off on the dribble handoff. He's sacrificing himself for the team. Now, no one sees that. They're going, hey, he took three shots. What's wrong with him? Ain't hey, nothing wrong with him. He's just trying to get his... Now, it's our job as coaches to get his teammates to start to free him up. He's trying to lead. He's the captain this year. He's trying to lead. He's trying to find ways to lead the team. We need to find ways to reciprocate with him. So, with this, 
You're teaching how to get your teammates open, how to get end plays out of a continuity offense. With girls, it's really important. With boys, it's important too because it's going to slow them down a little bit. You know, normally the ball would start here and you run that action. This kid says, screw that. Bam, I'm going. Don't worry about those guys. And the girls, the opposite. So bring in end plays on your breakdowns in the offense. So I'd use 10 minutes of offensive drills to teach what I'm teaching offensively. Girls, up on the baseline here. I need three defenders. One, two, and Georgia. Need three girls on offense. One with the ball, two guards out here. Don't leave the ball behind, come on. Okay. All right, let's change this one up. You're gonna go on defense, you're gonna go on defense, offense, 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 defense. So take the ball out white on the baseline. Take the ball out white, white's got it, hold it. I ain't telling you where you want it to play yet. Actually, George, you take it out. Okay, no zone, don't go there. You're gonna come up here, top of the three point line. Kayla over here, good, face guard, face guard, don't let her have it. We're down here, you're not getting the ball, okay? Now what are you doing? Watching? Nah, you're involved here too. So which is, which is the likely one of going over the top? If she's going to throw it over the top here to Michaela, it's going, probably going out of bounds over that side. So you're probably going to just inch over this way and make sure no pass goes in over the top. You girls do not let them in front of you. Do not let them in front, okay? So what we're doing here, and again, we want to make things competitive as much as possible with our training. Put that in your plan. Put something in that there's a punishment for losing, because we are now going to be Franks and who like to win, not just develop. We can develop and win at the same time, can't we? Okay, so you're going to run the baseline, you've got to get the ball to white. You guys just have to dribble it over half court or pass it over half court. Okay, now it has to land, the ball's not allowed to touch the floor on a pass, so there's no drop passes. If you drop the pass or the ball hits the floor, Okay, it's five push-ups on the offense. If the defense allows the ball over half court, it's five on the defense. Okay, we ready? We down our stance. Do not let the ball in. Okay, let's go. Hold it right there. Blue down, five. Let's go. Let's go. Offense goes to defense. Three blues on offense. Let's go. Let's go. Three blues, not blue. Three blues. Out, out, out. Take the ball out, need a big here, need our guards up there. Do not let that ball in, girls. Do not let it in. Face guard, here we go. Good, good, don't let it in, don't let it in. Hold it, ball hit the floor. Offense, down, five push-ups. Let's go, blue, five push-ups, let's go. Ball hit the floor, you're blue, yes. Good job, defense. Blue, your offense, need three whites up here on our... Yeah. The group that was just on offense, you're on defense. Let's go, let's go, LA, you're behind. No, Mac, what are you doing? Face guard. Okay, set, go. Don't let her have it, don't let her have it. Good, blue, down, five. Okay, so we make it competitive. There's an there's a outcome, if you lose, you, you, you get punished. Um, it's not being mean, it just keeps them a little bit more competitive, a little edgier. Yeah, so, so what we want to identify is the fact that some of the kids can't stop getting over half court. So what do you, what's the outcome of the yeah. team getting out of that? Uh, we kind of skim through, all I'm really doing here is just saying, okay, we're going to do 10 minutes of our press defence. But, get back on our defence, get back on the floor. Those last six. Okay, first and foremost. You guards are going to be right up and in. Okay, right up and in. Okay, make it uncomfortable for her. Now, Matt, hold that. Ball's over there, right? So you know it's over there. Just take one step this way. Okay, you have to be active on this one. Okay, active. You're down here, you're hedging. If she starts running this way, you're over this way. Okay, you do not want to let the ball in. So what generally happens here offensively is one of you will set a screen. Right? So come in, yep, don't, good, 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 good. So, screen, hold it. This is the switch. So it's coming, now you're switching that and you've got to get underneath and deny that. So we could break it down and teach what we want to do out of it. I don't have time today, it's the first time we do it. It's really about, let's get a press defense inside of a half court. So I'd spend 10 minutes on that. 
Special situations. We're going to teach an inbounds play today. Give me five blues on the floor, please. Need a two guard right here with the ball. Two man right here with the ball. Rip the ball off the whoever's got it and bring it. There you go, good. Got to be more athletes. One right here. One man right here. What you playing? What position? Kick her out then. Say, hey, I'm the one guard here. Good job, Mac. Don't wait to step up and be the one. Good. You can be the three, four, five. Right here. Three, right here. Okay, point guards, little life lesson. Nobody gets on your turf. Because I can't play at the two just yet, until you grow a little bit, okay? So it's like, hey, Mac, beat it. I'm the point guard around here, okay? That's how point guards take control, okay? Four, corner, five, right here. Did you not listen? No, I said no. Uh, no excuses. Okay, ball's here with the two. Okay, we're going to call this Anderson, okay? Now what we're going to do is have the five man Come in here, you're going to step in, get a little forearm shimmy and try and post up and get the ball immediately in right here. Okay, you're looking at her, you're probably not going to get it because chances are there's a defender right here. But we're still going to do that. What we want to do is you're coming in, you're engaging the defender. They start battling and fighting with you, which is what you want. Because as they start the battle and fight, you release and start backpedaling right here looking for a catch and shoot situation. You good for that? And Matt, wrestle with your imaginary player right now and we're going to fire it in and get the five man to shot at the elbow. Catch and shoot. Ready? Engage. Release. Shoot. Good. First shot in Anderson right there. Ball back of the two. This time you're going to engage. Release. Okay, you engage me. Engage me. Oh, I'm going to release. Okay, now I'm closing you out. Okay, as I close you out, you're going to come in and absolutely pollax me with a big screen. So I'm closing you out.